you've been in many things, but people will probably know you mostly from your work on Outlander, which is another show that people have you know, sort of an intense fan um, love yeah. for. And yeah. so was when this came up, was there any hesitation from on your part to enter another world that's so like heavily looked at by the by fans? Or were you, uh, you jump at the chance? You love it. No, I did I did jump at the chance. I mean it's um it's a wonderful world to be a part of. I mean, I'm I I was a fan of the original series as well. So when Ryan uh you know, Ryan and I go back to two previous shows that we'd worked on together and that we would meet for lunch and we would talk about this show, House of the Dragon. Uh, not that it was called that then, but this idea of a show about the Targaryens and everything. And I was like, mate, come on, we've got to, we've got to do this. Your family has dragons. Yeah, power men should never have trifled with. When I finally got the call and was like, yes, we want you to be involved. Oh, I absolutely jumped at it. But the whole fandom thing, I, I, I love it. I really do. I love the fact that these these shows these stories are already beloved by people and as long as you yourself take it seriously um i think it's a it's a great experience for everybody as a fan when you were talking with ryan we were like when we get to this point we've got to uh stick the landing on the finale better than game of thrones proper <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well yeah that didn't come up that didn't come up slightly but... talking cheap question no, but I, you know, it's, um, Ryan is uh, a huge fan of George's work and has that kind of investment in it that a, that a true fan has. But at the same time, you know, he's a, he's a writer for television. And so he understands that he has to temper that kind of fanboy element to himself. And he wouldn't mind me saying that about him. Uh, to to actually concentrate on what is the bigger picture. So hopefully yeah, that's what we've done. When you're going from a kilt to armor, is there a moment where on set where you're like, oh man, I'm kind of missing the kilt to be honest. Well, you miss you 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 miss the lightness of the kilt. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, the armor is somewhat heavier for sure. And I think Dougal McKenzie at least managed to sit down a couple of times in Outlander, whereas Harold Westerly never, ever, ever sits down. I, I remember asking Ryan at one point, um, is there a scene where you see me sitting? And he went, no, he doesn't sit. No. So 10 months of standing. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of standing. Um, so how would you describe your character's relationship to the Targaryen family? Well, he's um, immensely loyal. He's immensely loyal. Uh, as uh, the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, he has forsaken um, the kind of things that most people take for granted, um, relationships, uh, money, titles, land, all of that kind of stuff. Not for him, he's devoting his entire life to this family. Um, it's almost like a religious order, really. And, and he is like, he is a sort of monk-like figure in some ways, uh, a little bit like the sort of uh, Templar Knights in that sense, that, you know, they're warrior knights um, who have that kind of religious fervor. And his religion just happens to be the Targaryens. Um, but he is immensely devoted to them and, and he has a particularly strong relationship with Rhaenyra because she he's known her since she was born and has a kind of father-daughter relationship with her to some degree. And uh, I think personally he's very pleased when he sees that she has been uh, chosen to be heir the throne. Yeah, so given his sort of familial loyalty to the Targaryens, but his very like, I guess, personal loyalty to Rhaenyra, do you feel like when this inevitable conflict happens, I don't know, I'm sure you can't tell me the answer to this, mm. will he side with her? Yes, um, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was coming out of my mouth and I was like, he's not gonna answer this. I can't answer that question. Uh, no, he's, um, the, the only thing that I can say about Harold for sure, is that he is always guided by what he believes is right, mm -hmm. right, you know, morally right, and that that shapes his path in everything. And uh, unlike many of the people who inhabit the world of House of the Dragon, if you had a, a personal dragon, have you given any thought as to what you would name it? Oh, 
That's a great question. Actually, I've, I've, I've tried not to think too much about it because it was so denied me. Uh -huh. When I got the job, I turned to my kids and I said, oh, I'm in this show and dragons and it's, do you, do you have a dragon, dad? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> Hannah doesn't have a dragon. No, so I was a bit disappointed about that. So it's a bit of a sore point, but yeah. um, what would I name it? What would I name it? Um, I think I think Harold would have quite a sort of sweet name. Mm. Is Drax not you know not like Draxus or whatever they're called or you know all these kind of really harsh sounding words? Maybe something like um, I don't know Lulu. Oh, you I know, <laughs> Lulu like the dragon because he's very confident in his own masculinity. He doesn't yeah. need to have this kind of big kind of look at my dragon name. It's just like hey, this is Lulu. Mm -hmm.